Hello everyone, this is Johnny and welcome back. In today's video, I wanna do a plant haul uh, for the Acer Palmatum Japanese maples that I purchased today. And I got 13 different varieties here that I wanna share with you and I also need to pot them up because they're in these little small uh, band or tube pots. So for instance, here's the first one and I will uh, pot this up here into a larger pot, but this one is an Acer Palmatum Olson's Frosted Strawberry. This is definitely one that I've had on my list since I found out about it. Um, you can see kind of the uh, pinkish red color of the leaves there. And then during the summer, this will actually have some green leaves in the undergrowth. It'll have some white new growth and it'll have this pink. And so it'll kind of look like a frosted strawberry. So right now these are in these little band pots and I'm going to go ahead and pot these up to this size. Um, and I'm just using a GNB Organics potting soil that I use for other plants. Uh, but I'm just gonna put a little bit of soil in here. And then we'll take this out of the band pot. And then I have my tag here. Something new that I'm doing, and I'll show you this, I'm drilling a little hole here at the front of the pot. And then I'm just gonna stick these aluminum tags that you can, um, you can indent on with like a, a ballpoint pen or something like that. I'm gonna stick that in here so that the tags actually attach to the pot not the tree itself, more of a permanent tag. These should also be available on Amazon and I can link to these below with an affiliate link if you are interested in these, but these are great. They last a long time and allow you to uh, mark your plants reliably. Okay, so we have this little stake here and I'll leave that there and then we have uh, a little tag from the nursery. Let's take this out and see how the roots are. It's got a decent amount of roots. It's actually not too root bound, it's just ever so slightly. So I'm just going to loosen those roots up just a little bit here. I'm very happy with what that looks like in here. And I watered these earlier so they'd be a little bit moist. Okay, that's probably loose enough. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stick this down in my pot. Like about there. Just making sure that the soil level at the end is going to be roughly the same as it was before. I don't want to get the soil level too high because that's not good for the, the plant. Um, and I'm just going to put some soil in here like this, squeeze that in. Um, for this fill, it might be a little easier to use my hand, uh, but I, I'm ex super excited about this particular tree. And I, I got a stunning collection over here that we're gonna go through and I'll make sure that we get some close-ups of these for you so you can take a look at them. Um, I will next year work this into likely a two gallon pot, a larger two gallon pot. Uh, but for now, I don't wanna to go too aggressive since they're in small little pots. And um, the steak will stay for now. I may um, not need that steak in the future, but I'll just leave it for now since it's there. Uh, but there's that first one done. And then once again, I'm just taking my aluminum tag here and I'm gonna stick it in that hole it's going to be much happier in there. And when I get done with all these, I will go ahead and water these in well, but that's going to be much happier in that size. And then next year I can pot it up further. Um, but the Olson's Frosted Strawberry, um, definitely one that I had on my list and I'm glad I have this in my collection now. Okay, this next one, and these are all Acer Palmatum, so I'm not going to continue to say Acer Palmatum, but this is a, a variety called Orion. Um, I really love how small and densely packed these leaves are and it's got a beautiful red color. I'm gonna do more research. I don't have information right now on the growth habits on this, um, but beautiful tree and I'm happy to have this also in my collection. I'm gonna go ahead and pot that up exactly the same way as I did this one here. I love to be able to add trees to my collection um, in a more affordable way for these small sizes. And uh, when you have a limited amount of space and uh, uh, you can only have so many trees. This allows you to have unique varieties in a smaller amount of space and then grow them up without also spending a ton of money on the different varieties. So uh, I definitely enjoy buying these smaller trees and it's rewarding to grow it from this size to four or five years from now to a pretty impressive start, starting to become a pretty impressive tree. And that's a lot of fun. Uh, the same thing here, just wanna keep the soil level roughly the same there. Kind of put that in. In this particular application, it looks like the soil scoop's not quite as handy. Now you st still could use that, um, but for seed starting, it's extremely helpful. In this particular case, it looks like the hands are working great. I'm um, just kind of tucking that in, making sure it's kind of firm. I don't want it to be uh, compacted, but decently firm. And then once again, I'll water these all in at the end. 
but there's the Orion variety. And then I'm just gonna stick this aluminum tag in that little hole. Let's see, where did I put that there? There we go, there's the hole. Okay, here's one. Let me turn it there so you can see it better. This is called Winter Flame. Um, and I do see that this has a nice coral bark, bark color to it, but then it also has the green and red leaves. So that's a stunning tree. It looks like both in the summer and of course it has winter interest with a coral bark. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and put that in one of those same size pots. Okay, so there's the winter flame in its new pot. Okay, this next one is probably one that's on a lot of people's wish list. And you can't see all the variegation right now, but this is a, a geisha gone wild. And this is one that I definitely uh, wanted pretty badly, and I'm glad I was able to find it in a small, affordable size. Um, just wonderful color variation throughout the year. Um, just one of the most beautiful Japanese maples, in my opinion, um, of the variegated varieties. But absolutely love this one. Excited to have this one as well. Okay, good root system on that. Everything looks good. Not too root bound, but it does have a good amount of roots. So I'm happy with that. Let's kind of loosen it up a little bit. And we'll get that in this new pot. There's the Geisha Gone Wild. Okay, this next variety is actually uh, really tall. So this one's already like somewhere around three feet tall. Um, so hopefully you can kind of see that. I'll try to get a better shot of it so you can see that. But this is a Bini, um, Bini Sukasa, T-S-U-K-A-S-A. -S -A. Um, this is not one I'd seen before, but when I saw it at the nursery, I definitely had to have it. Um, but I just love this tree and it's a good size already. Um, so this one's definitely one that will probably uh, very quickly get into a much bigger pot. But for now, I'm gonna go in this same size pot here. There's these uh, five and a half inch by five and a half inch by roughly six inch tall square plastic pots. Happy with that root system. There are some bigger roots there. Um, and I'll just kind of loosen that slightly. Don't want to damage it, but I just want to loosen this so it can spread into um, the new soil. And then we'll gradually work that up uh, next year once again. Certainly this is going to go in a bigger pot and uh, we'll move it up till we get to a pretty good size five plus gallon pot in the future. But there is my Bini Tsukasa. Uh, let me just stick the metal tag on that and then that one's done. Okay, this next one is a Shadava Gold. And um, I have been really liking kind of the yellow and gold colored ones. This one's kind of a lime green right now, kind of a lime green to kind of a yellow, a brighter yellow here. Um, but I have been loving the contrast of the yellow varieties like this. Um, when you put them against red, it's just stunning, uh, the difference there. So I'm definitely going to be incorporating more of this particular color into my collection. Um, reds are great, uh, the green with uh, pink and white variegation are great, but it's great to have accent colors like this as well. Uh, so let me go ahead and pot this one up. Okay, so there's the Shadava Gold all potted up. Okay, this one is also uh, one that is kind of in that yellowy uh, gold color with red on the margins, and I really love this particular one as well. This is not one that I had on my list, but when I saw it, once again, it was one I wanted and it was a good, tall, healthy tree with a good looking graft point. Um, but yeah, this is, this is a beautiful tree. It's called um, Japanese Sunrise. And I'm definitely excited to see this one grow up into a big, large tree. And I'm definitely excited to, uh, to hopefully propagate from a lot of these trees in the future. Okay, so there's the Japanese Sunrise all potted up and uh, we'll go to the next one. Okay, this next one is part of the Ghost series, and this particular one is the Grandma Ghost. I already have an Amber Ghost, and so I'm adding this one to the collection. I also have a Purple Ghost um, that'll be potting up, but great tree, um, beautiful um, at various points in the year, including right now. Love the color of that, but I'm excited to have the Grandma Ghost as part of my collection now. And before I water these in, I probably will add a little bit of organic fertilizer 
some slow release fertilizer, um, some Espoma plant tone, which I've started using with my Japanese maples. And so I'll probably go ahead and sprinkle a little bit of that in and then water that in as well, just to give these a little head start. Um, I fertilize my Japanese maples, generally speaking, once a season, sometime, usually in May. But since I just got these here, um, these are new for me and they're going into new soil, I think now is going to be a good time to go ahead and uh, fertilize these for the season. Okay, so there's the grandma ghost. Okay, so this next one is the uh, purple ghost. Once again, also part of the ghost uh, series. And once again, one that I'm super happy to have in my collection. Good healthy root system, got some bigger roots there, which are good. Kind of loosen that up, get that in its new pot. Okay, so there's the purple ghost all potted up. So this next one is a dissectum variety called um, Hana Matoy or Hana Matoy, H-A-N-A. -A. Um, and I looked this up, this is a dwarf variety. This won't grow all that tall. It'll grow maybe three feet tall or so and be weeping and uh, low growing. But I love the color and the pink variegation mixed in with the red. Okay, so there's the Hana Matoy. Okay, so this next one is a Lillian Jewel, or it might be Lillian's Jewel. I'll have to look that up and I'll put the correct name on the screen, whether it has that S or not. Um, but this particular one is a variegated variety once again. A beautiful, small, little red and variegated with some pink leaves. And uh, this is definitely one I'm excited to have in the collection as well. And this one's quite tall. This is over two feet tall. And... Um, this should grow out pretty quickly once I get it in the new pot and we'll pot this up uh, pretty aggressively over the next several years. Okay, so there's a Lillian or Lillian's Jewel and I'll look that up to make sure if it has that S or not, um, but beautiful and happy to have that potted up in a bigger pot. This is a variety called Sir Damon, D-A-M-O-N. And um, this leaf is stunning. It has kind of the splattering of kind of a yellowy green in the midst of the red. Uh, it's a very tall tree as well, and it's a coral bark color. Um, so it's a coral bark with a unique leaf color. And I just, I love the coral barks because they look great in the winter, but this is gonna look great in the summer as well. So we'll pot that up and I'm glad to have this in the collection. Okay, so there's the Sir Damon variety all potted up. Okay, so the last one here isn't a gallon pot, but it doesn't have that much soil. And this was in a portion of the nursery um, where they kind of had some of the trees that had maybe like some die off here with a branch and they're just maybe not as perfect and as pretty as some of the other ones. And they sold this to me at a discount, um, but a really unique variety. And I just love the way that leaf was and I couldn't pass this one up. So I'm gonna pot this up and I will need to do some pruning of dead wood on this particular one. But overall the tree, looks healthy enough and I think I can uh, definitely grow this out to be a very healthy tree so definitely worth having um, but it's a variety called tiger rose okay so this is probably at one point rooted into the ground through that hole because you can kind of see that it's got a decent amount of roots in there I think this is going to be a, a good tree once again it's important I'm going to add a little more soil because I want this to be at the same level the same soil level as it was before so you don't uh, have any rot around here you definitely don't want to bury these down in and try to cover the, this with soil. You want to keep this soil level roughly the same. Okay, for this particular one, I drilled two little holes there for this larger pot. And I'm going to do the same thing. Stick the tag in there. So I got those all done. I'm going to line them up across here and show you another good shot of that. And then I'm going to put some fertilizer in these pots, kind of mix that in slightly, and then go ahead and water these in. Okay, so here's the 13 trees that I purchased and um, got them all potted up. And now I'm just going to add a little bit of Espoma plant tone fertilizer into each pot before I water that in. And I'll just ever so slightly mix that in and give them a good shot to grow. When you fertilize Japanese maples, you want to make sure it's a slow release fertilizer um, so that you don't um, damage the plant. If you use like a fast, fast release fertilizer or something you use in the vegetable garden, that potentially could kill your tree. So some kind of slow release fertilizer and I prefer the organic options like Espoma plant tone and I will link to that that is available on Amazon. I'll link to that below if you'd like to pick some up 
and that'll be an Amazon affiliate link. And if you purchase using that link, it does help support this channel. Amazon does give me a commission when you purchase from those links. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and fertilize these in real quick, water them, and then uh, we'll wrap this up. I could have fertilized these when I was potting it up and then maybe that would have been better, but you wanna just kind of mix that in a little bit. So it's not just here only at the surface, but it kind of mixes in the soil and that will drain down as it breaks down, but just a light mixing here and with soil. Once again, you might do this as you pot them up so you can kind of get it mixed down in. That might have been better, but I didn't do that, so now I'm fertilizing them here. And whatever fertilizer you use, just make sure you follow the directions. Use a slow-release fertilizer of some kind um, and follow the directions based on your pot size. You know, in the summer, generally every couple days or so, you need to make sure you check the water level here. You don't want to overwater, but you certainly don't want to underwater. And the, the big thing is, with, within reason, you know, reasonable amount of water, stay consistent with your watering. Uh, most plants, you find out what they need, and then you stay consistent with that. And they will appreciate a consistency with their watering schedule. Man, I'm coming through several times and, you know, getting in the wet the first time and coming back through a second time just to make sure that soil really gets saturated. Um, because the soil wasn't as, as uh, moist as sometimes it is in those bags. Okay, so I made a little window in between these so you can see me a little better, but here they are, um, potted up, fertilized, and watered in. And I'm super happy to have these trees in my collection. Once again, all Acer palmatum varieties, and I look forward to propagating off of these in the future as they grow up. Well, until next time, thanks for watching.